former mayor of the city of Detroit, Coleman Young Jr., state senator, Democrat from Detroit, on the other end of our AT&T line right this second. I presume you think that's uh, good news and a good idea that this uh, mortgage program will let people buy homes in the city of Detroit with as little as zero down. Have you heard about that? Yeah, I have heard about that. Hey, Michael, always a pleasure to be Thank here you. with you. I was I finally arrived We're on the Michael <laughs> Patrick Shield show. Uh, yeah, you know, I think that's the kid's plan. I think the mayor's plan for mortgage is really good. And, uh, you know, we'll have to see how it goes and see what happens. But, you know, I just read re- recently there's only like 400 mortgages rented to see Detroit. I, mean, I think that's sadly absurd. And uh, hopefully we'll have more mortgages and we'll encourage more people to get old. I think that's a good thing. Uh, what you do not think is a good thing is this meddling with Michigan's auto no-fault insurance law, as I understand it. What happened yesterday, and what should happen? Well, first of all, let me just say, uh, the only thing that was more disappointing than the passage of that law of the Senate was when Michigan State lost to the Final Four and when <laughs> Dane left one direction. I mean, I have not been this disappointed since those two things happened. But uh, let me just say, uh, first of all, I think it is absolutely absurd to speed in which this move and the fact that we're just, you know, price gouging the constituents. I think it's another hidden tax. I think the fact that we are basically putting price controls on hospitals in terms of how much they can charge, but we're not putting price controls on an insurance industry that has been redlining the city of Detroit. In Detroit, uh, auto insurance costs are average to 6000 to $10,000 a year, depending on where you're at, who you talk to. I think it's absolutely absurd that you have 20 people, 20% of the people in the state who are uninsured and more than 60% of the city of Detroit. You know, I think the system was broken, but I think what we did today was break it further, not move to fix it. Did you even have time to read the bill that was voted upon? No. no I li- look, we didn't even get the bill. First of all, we didn't even find out that we were going to move the bill until Wednesday. And then we didn't get the bill. We had, and then we didn't even get a chance to read the bill, and then with the time we got, and then time we got the original bill, they had a substitute, and we didn't get to see the substitute until right before the vote. So it was pretty ridiculous. What what what, what was going on? I mean, you know, it, 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 it's the equivalent of like one team, it's the equivalent of like both teams being in the dark, but one team having no, the, the other team having no way to see anything at all, and the other team having night vision goggles. But that's really what it was. I mean, the, the disadvantage is just outrageous. And the fact that they would do that, I thought, was just the height of irresponsibility. And, you know, it's always like they say, the bills that move the fastest usually have the worst stuff in them. And the city, we don't move anything quickly. So to, to, to do this, you know it's bad. Fascinating and also uh, disturbing, too. Uh, State Senator Coleman Young there he didn't even get to see the bill, didn't have time to read the bill, but... Mm-hmm. Sure enough, it was voted on and it passed. And 